Namaham Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane, Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharane, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshitarane, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Chaivanarotamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudhi Rayet Nashta Praeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Tyutta Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Srimad Bhagavatam Skanda 4 Adhyaya 18 23, 24 or 25? 23, 24 Angala Angala Pravachanam Bhavati Natu Samskrita Bhashayam Angala Bhashayam Kannada Bhasha Aham Na Jane. Andhra Bhasha Api Lipi Gyana Masti. Sambhasha Nasya Kshamata Nasti. Hindi Angalam. What is better for you, Hindi or English? English. Pashavo Yavasam Kshiram. Vatsam Kritvacha Govrisham Aranya Patre Chadhukshan Mrigendri Natchadam Strinaha Kravyadhaf Prani Nakra Kravyam Dudu husre kalevare Suparna vatsa vihagash Charam cha charam evacha Since since we're late I think we can skip the repetition Pada Pataha. Nobody does that, right, in Iskan. But that is what this is. Pada Pataha. Re reading the words. Pashavaha. Cattle. Yavasam. Green grasses. Kshiram. Milk. Vatsam, the calf, Kritva, making, Cha, also, Govrisham, the bull carrier of Lord Shiva. Aranya Patre, in the pot of the forest, Cha, also, adhukshan, milk, milked out, mriga indrena, by the lion, cha, and dhamstrinaha, animals with sharp teeth, kravya adaha, kravya, kravya adaha, 
animals who eat raw flesh. Praninaha. Living entities. Kravyam. Flesh. Dudu, dudu, hu, hu. Took out. Sway. Own. Kalevare. In the part of their body. Suparna. Garuda. Vatsaha. Whose calf. Vigaha. Name, Shamaka, uh, excuse me. Vihagaha. The birds. Charam. Moving living entities. Cha. Also, acharam, non-moving living entities. Eva, certainly, cha, also. Translation in purport by Srila Prabhupada. The four-legged animals, like the cows, made a calf out of the bull who carries Lord Shiva and made a, made a milking pot out of the forest. Thus they got fresh green grasses to eat. Ferocious animals like tigers transformed a lion into a calf and thus they were, able, they were able to get flesh for milk. The birds made a calf out of Garuda and took milk from the planet Earth in the form of moving insects and non-moving plants and grasses. Purport. There are many carnivorous birds descended from Garuda, the winged carrier of Lord Vishnu. Indeed, there is a particular type of bird that is very fond of eating monkeys. Eagles are fond of eating goats. And of course, many birds eat only fruits and berries. The words charam, referring to moving animals, and acharam, referring to grasses, fruits, and vegetables are mentioned in this verse. Hare Krishna. This is not a very philosophical verse. What can be said? It's a description of how Birds descended from Garuda according to the purport and that purport is taken from the purports of other Purva Acharyas. Four-legged animals made a calf of the bull who carries Lord Shiva. That's very hard to understand. I can't understand it, I think, myself. What does it mean? Prithu Maharaj milks the earth. It's a description of different living entities. Prithu Maharaj was famous for uh, making the earth into a farmland. That's what we can say. So there are efforts by some ISKCON leaders. Actually, the effort was by Prabhupada because I was there in Hyderabad with Prabhupada in 1976 and 75 also when he was donated a huge piece of land, 565 acres. Now, the donors are very tricksters. Well, it turned out like that. Unfortunately, the Hindu society has become overwhelmed by, what do you call it? Westernization. Oh, there's another name, Kali Yuga. You see the time of Gandhi, they have pictures and movies. Nobody wore pants and shirt in this country. Nobody. Everyone had a dhoti. Prabhupada went to the West, he put on 
the dotis on everyone. Yadubara Prabhu made a movie in 1975 or 76 about New Vrindavan. Has, how many of you saw that movie? It's called The Spiritual Frontier. I have only one hand here. You didn't see that? You saw two. You didn't see Prabhu? Spiritual Frontier. It's an interesting story which maybe I'll tell tonight, maybe, because tonight is Prabhupada pastimes. But I'll tell the story here. I, with one other devotee, went to Dubai to raise money for the Hyderabad temple. And we collected a lot of money in those days. So we, there were some benefits of that besides we were sending checks to Hyderabad and Prabhupada came for the opening. We flew with Prabhupada from Bombay to Hyderabad, one hour, didn't say anything. Went to the bathroom once, that was it. But before that, in, before Bombay, we were in Dubai and I heard that there was a new technological development which was a briefcase. But inside the briefcase, there was a projector. There was a company called Fairchild. You heard of that? So there was a cassette. And that cassette was an eight millimeter film. Now, it's, it's, it's obsolete, finished, gone. Everything is digital, right? But in those days, this is how many years ago? 43 years ago. This was a new breakthrough. So there were two movies that had been made by Yadubara Prabhu. The Hare Krishna people and the spiritual frontier. So I, from Los Angeles, I ordered these, the briefcase and the two movies, and it came to Dubai. And it had to pass through customs. And because it was a movie, the customs officials were Arabs. They said, we have to see the movie. Yeah. Then they saw the movie and said, this is not Islam, quote unquote. So I said, you're right, but I'm going to India in four days. Oh, okay, you can take it inside. We never showed it there. We brought to Bombay. Then I was sitting with Prabhupada and he was, he, they had invited three very rich people to have lunch with Prabhupada. Two ladies and one man. K.J. Somaya, the Somaya Vidya Vihar in Bombay, have you heard of that? Huge college. Uh, he was a rich industrialist. His son donated a room in the Juhu Temple. You can see his name on the board, Dr. S.K. Somaya. K.J. and S.K. both are gone. Somaya is a Lohana, you know this Lohana caste? Gujarati, actually their Lohana caste is from Afghanistan. Upaganistan was a Hindu place. Loharana, Lohana, that's how it came. Loharana Jasraj, they say that he was killed by Genghis Khan, this is a thousand years ago or whatever. So anyway, he was there, KJ Somayo, he was quite elderly, must have been 80, 85. And Ashok Birla's mother, Gopi Kumari Birla. Ashok Birla died here. You know that? No? There was a plane crash in 1990. Ashok Birla, his wife and his daughter expired. Half of the people survived and half of the people died. So his, this was 1976, August. So his mother and this uh, 
Bridge Ratan Mota, you might have heard of him. He was very friendly to Prabhupada. He was also from the same caste as the Birlas. That's the Maheshwari caste. You've heard of the Maheshwari Marwari uh, Baniyas. So his wife was R.D. Birla's daughter. Bridge Ratan Mota's wife was R.D. This uh, Ashok Birla was R.D. Birla's brother's daughter, son or grandson, I can't remember. Or it might have been his, I don't think it was his. There were four Birla brothers. J.K. R.D. Then Gansham Das Birla who went with Gandhi to England in the 1940s. He was very young. And then there was B.M. Bridge Mohan who inaugurated the Hyderabad Birla Temple in 77 January. That's before Prabhupada, no, just after Prabhupada had inaugurated Iskan Hyderabad in Janmashtami 76. I attended that Birla Temple opening. This Chinna Jir's grandfather was the Pedda Jir Swami. He and I don't want to mention the other Swami who came, Ranganathananda, unfortunately, bogus. Murgi Mission Sanyasi. You know about the Murgi Mission, right? Yeah. So, I was sitting with these late, two ladies and there was a number of disciples, Prabhupada's disciples. Number means 510. And there was, you know, Babananda had taken sannyas and his ex-wife, former wife, free sannyas was her name was Palika, Palika Devi Dasi. She was a very good cook, so she was cooking. And these three multi-multi-millionaires sat on the floor to take prasad. But before that, they were sitting with Prabhupada in the room and he was talking with them. And I just very boldly said, Srila Prabhupada, I brought these movies would you like to show them? And he said, yes. So I went, I got the projector, and I showed the spiritual frontier. He watched it for, it's like 40 minute movie. You know, it's not very long. So in that movie, and this is a Prabhupada pastime, but in the movie, the head of Nuvrindavan was, I don't want to mention his name, but I have to, it's Kirtanananda. He was saying, Prabhupada told us to depend on nature's beauty and the cows. And then there was a, you know, vi video tour, visual tour of Nuvrindavan. So Prabhupada wanted that should be, you know, a farming community. Uh, what's today? October 12th, correct? Two and a half months ago, I visited Nuvrindam for two days, August 1st and 2nd. Farming does go on with tractors. I think one devotee looks after the farm, something like that. So that whole idea of Prabhupada, that there would be a community of devotees, didn't, uh, wasn't sustained. Same thing in Hyderabad. Prabhupada put three senior disciples in charge of the farm. One of them had been president of Delhi, the first president of Delhi, Tejas Prabhu. I met him also this time in the United States. He's in New Taliban, which is another farm, which is also all done by tractor. <laughs> They have 1,200 acres, New Taliban. Tejas has a degree in agriculture. He has a degree, he's still there. And Hansa Dutta and Mahamsa, Mahamsa, who we call Mahamsa, didn't work, couldn't work together. Human beings, they like to fight with each other. That's Kali Yuga. Kalaha Priya. 
how to have unity. Prabhupada stressed unity, but difficult, difficult. Difficult because strong-headed and I am right and everyone else is wrong. And this is very common, this kind of mentality. And then again, somebody has to be a leader. And when you get in the leadership post, most of the people think, well, actually I am great. I came here because I'm wonderful. That's not the Vedic system. That's not the Vedic concept. What's the Vedic concept? Evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu. What is a rajarshi? That is the question. One of my favorite now recently verses in Bhagavatam, which many devotees, I, I, last night I asked, nobody could answer. I think you came later. Dana dharman, raja dharman, moksha dharman, vibhagashaha. Stri dharman, bhagavad dharman, samasa vyasa yogataha. Where is it in Bhagavatam? Who can answer? No one. No one can answer. Huh? First canto, correct. Now, after first canto, then? Thank you for your honesty. Bhishma is lying on Sharashaya, Banshaya. Bhishma Pitamaha in North India. Bengal, they say Bhishma Dev. So Lord Krishna took Yudhishthir. He's about to die, Bhishma. Icha Mrityu, he can die anytime he desires. He's waiting for Uttarayanam. He's already physically incapacitated, lying on the battlefield. What is it called in Hindi? Virgati in Hindi. You say that here? Virgati, same thing. Viragati maybe. So, Yudhishthir went there, then he asked, tell me what is dharma? So this is a description, ninth chapter, 27 shloka. What Bhishma instructed Yudhishthir? Dana dharman, how to give charity. Raja dharman, how to run the kingdom. Moksha dharman, how to get moksha. Stri dharman, what should women do? Bhagavad dharman, what should bhaktas do? Devotees. In brief and in detail, he explains, samasa vyasa yogata. Krishi goraksha vanijam vaisha karma svabhavacham. Goraksha and Krishi are the duties of Vaishas. Now Vaishas have a hundred different industries, right? Not a hundred, thousand. But not Krishi and Goraksha. Prabhupada wanted this Krishi and Goraksha, for sure. But he also wanted the re-establishment of the Varnashram. That means it should be done not by institutions, but by persons, community. He didn't make such a rigid, okay, only person born in a Vaishya family. Janma is a factor because karana guna sangasya sad asad yoni janmasu. According to Gita, Bhagavad Gita, we get a good birth or a bad birth according to our prarabdha karmas. 
karana guna sangasya and also the uh, association of rajogun tamogun and sattvagun the gunas karana guna sangasya sada sadyoni some people will never come to a hindu temple right we believe it's a great fortune Prabhupad said that anyone who comes to our temple is a Mahatma, a great soul. Because there are many people, human beings, whole life will go by. They'll never have darshan of any deities. They don't believe, they don't have that sanskaras. They're, you know, then they want to break the temples, right? Or those who just, they're ignorant, right? Due to circumstances. They're born in faraway places, not connected with Bharata. That, uh, another shloka, unfortunately, I didn't memorize that. Aho amisham kimakari shobanam yad Bharata jagnire. One who is born in Bharata is very fortunate. This is in the fifth canto, Panchamaskanda. Five, the Jambu Dweep, 21, 21st Adhyaya. The Deva Deva Uchuhu, the Devatas are praying like that. May we be born in Bharata. We believe this is true. Some of us have faith that it's true. Prabhupada taught like that. This is a fact. Evam parampara praptam through parampara we got. Oh. There are so many far flung places in the world, right? South America, Russia, Korea, Siberia. Alaska, even the USA and Canada now, a lot of Hindus have gone there. They made Hindu temples. And if you go to those temples, you will find only Indians. Very rarely the local people will go. There is no prajar. So, but still, even though prajar is going on, ISKCON also has spread. Prabhupada wanted his come to spread all over the world. But the place of India was special. Even Devatas want to be born here. A part of that is the part of it means one of the main reasons is the Vedic culture. The people were following the Vedic culture. The whole system was intact for thousands of years. Parampara, there are two translations. Prabhupada used disciplic succession. But the other translation, more common, I would say, is tradition. So both of them, I think, are valid. The ancient traditions of Vedic culture is also parampara. Param before, para before that. So guru shishya parampara, disciplic succession. Guru shishya parampara. And just parampara is those ancient traditions. They've been given up. They've been given up by the masses because the leaders are misleading them. Leaders are misguiding. So leaders should not misguide. Leaders should give the, like Prabhupada said, I have not invented anything. I'm a messenger presenting what is already there. No, don't change it. That is your disease or whatever, should not change. But 
You see, it's a very popular saying, times are changing. So that's a good excuse to make changes. But it's Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma does not change. It is Sanatan, it is eternal. How can it change? Okay, we change the language. Sanskrit Bhashya Jananti Janaha Kintu Prayaha Prayogaha Nakaroti Nakurvanti Karaniyam Nayakaha Samajasya Nayakaha uh, Samskrita Bhasha Krite Karyam Yat Karaniyam Nakurvanti Adesha Dhatavyam Shasakiya Karyam Sarvam Samskrita Dwarena Bhavishyati Yadi Tadrisha Adesha Prapyate Samanya Janaha Shigram Eva Shikshishyanti Samskrita if only they would order, government work will only be in Sanskrit. But of course there would be protests because when India got independence from British rule, they chose Hindi and English, two languages. They, at that time they would have chosen Sanskrit. What is the example? Israel. They have Hebrew as the national language. So the ancient language of that place and the ancient language of this place is Sanskritam. Of course, long period of time it became, it went out of use, long period. Due to so many factors, Prabhupada said, the people of Kali Yuga are less intelligent, therefore, therefore. And that's true, that's true. But doesn't mean we can't converse in Sanskrit. There are a lot of people that do it. So because the people are less intelligent, the prioritization of what is most important in life has been lost. That has been lost. Spiritual life, satsanga, is the most important thing. But now people think entertainment, business, recreation, these are more important than spiritual life. There's entertainment in spiritual life. There's recreation in spiritual life. But they don't believe Nastikas, they became atheists. Time is up, right? Time was up at nine o'clock, right? No, there's another lecture. There's another lecture, so I'll let you go. I couldn't lecture on this exactly because purport is also very short and uh, doesn't really cover much philosophically. Any question? So there's another lecture at one o'clock? Is that topical or that's just general? A little general. I don't know that much about Kartik Prat that I... Uh, generally, I can Yeah. That's that's like <coughs> Prabhupada was asked that uh, Why doesn't Krishna, he's all-powerful Lord, 
Krishna, do this or do that. And he replied, well, work in such a way Krishna will see you rather than why he doesn't show himself. So you have to work in such a way. So if we go on with the preaching activities and at the same time hopefully oops, hopefully behave properly, <laughs> we have to have such a behavior that it will inspire the people. But when you're talking about institution, then you're talking about a lot of people who have to behave properly. Obviously, there is good behavior because I'm not saying it's all bad behavior. But we wouldn't have so many successes as an institution. Consider when Prabhupada passed away 42 years ago, there were eight centers in India. I came here in December 74 to arrange a program. There was no ISKCON. We went to Nellur, we came here, and then we went back to Hyderabad. You know Ram Shraddha, who lives in Mayapur, he was a bhakta. He's older than me, but he hadn't joined the temple. He hadn't gotten initiated at that time. But he came with me to Nellur and here, to Bangalore. For just two, three days we stayed to explore organizing some program. That program happened a few months later but I didn't have much to do with the organization. But Nellur, uh, that program also, that came, that came quite quickly. January 75, <coughs> where we, a month later. That we organized. Uh, because the local people were very enthusiastic to have the program. Then one year later, Prabhupada came to Nellur. So I was sent a day earlier from Madras, Chennai, to just look at the arrangements, but everything was pakka. So, uh, you know, we have to be bold also, uh, just like meeting the leaders and getting their uh, support. If we don't meet them and don't get their support, then uh, we, may, we may not accomplish uh, the task. There has to be also rigorous preaching in different fields. Like for instance, for example, scientific field, Bhaktivedanta Institute. Prabhupada wanted See, there are two things there. One is to establish our philosophy through science. And the other is to gather scientists and to preach to them. So very few people are doing it, for example. Very, it's being done, but very few. Prabhupada, I saw in Bombay in 74, that book had just been published, Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness. Swarup Damodar, who later became Bhakti Swarup Damodar. You know, he took sannyas after Prabhupada, disappeared, not from Prabhupada. But uh, Prabhupada was very proud of that book. I saw him showing it to visitors and my disciple is a PhD and he wrote this. So, the, the preaching activities that are going on, we have to expand them, but it's not so easy. Oh, I dropped it again. It's not so easy. Right? I mean, if, if I, if, now I'm saying, the efforts to convince scientists that our ideology is scientifically correct. According to their, uh, what is it, system of scientific inquiry. That's a tall order. 
isn't it? So, there is one devotee here. He wanted to join the BI in 1977. So our temple president wrote to Prabhupada that XYZ, I won't mention his name, wants to join the BI. So Prabhupada wrote back that if he doesn't have a PhD, then there's no use of his joining the BI. The letter was like that. Now, how many PhDs are there in ISKCON? And when we do youth preaching, we we don't encourage them to go for PhD. Join, become a pracharak. So, there are, that's just one example. There are many fields where we could be more rigorously preaching. We are expanding the preaching. For instance, I'll give you one example. Arabic books. A small group of Prabhupada disciples had Gita printed in Arabic and they were distributing it in 1980 in Beirut, Lebanon. At that time, there was a civil war. There was an open fighting. Not anymore. Not anymore, not for some years now. It, it doesn't mean that there are not tensions in the society because there are different groups and they don't like each other, but somehow, without fighting, they're going on. In India, there are many groups, but people live peacefully together. They coexist. But that Arabic book distribution stopped, right, in the 1980s. Long, long time ago, 35 years ago, top. And the one Arabic devotee who translated, he migrated to Canada. And he lived there for many years and then he had a desire to live in Mayapur, he had a stroke. Still he was coming to Mayapur and then in, he went back to Canada and he expired, he's no more. But someone else took it up and got scholarly people to translate the books and started publishing the books. Now, what is the difference between 1980 and today? Arabic tourism and Arabic students studying in Europe and the USA. So there are a lot of Arabic speakers. In Arabia, there's a lot of Islamic fanaticism. It's very difficult to distribute Hindu books to Muslims and to Christians even. I'm just telling you frankly. So, in this field, there has been now a, a good expansion of distribution of these books. I'm not doing it personally, but I'll tell you a small story that's not even a long story. I was in a lift in an elevator at the University of Maryland because my son was there. And two boys got in the lift. They looked like Indians. And they started speaking. I couldn't understand what language are you speaking? Arabic. They were from, where are you from? Saudi Arabia. They looked like Hindus. So I didn't have an Arabic book at that time. I didn't have, I wasn't able to give them the book. But such students and tour, tourists I saw in Los Angeles, this is last year, 2018, I went on Harinam in uh, Santa Monica. And there was a good group of Harinam and some tourists were Arabs. You know, they came up and uh, our book distributors were there. I was in the Kirtan. So I've seen this. Now, these are two things I mentioned, Arabic books and Bhaktivedanta Institute. But there are many, many other ways of book distribution. 
is another book, Arabic books is part of book distribution. How to change the world, Prabhupada stressed book distribution. In India, he met himself in Nira Gandhi. He met the political in Hyderabad. There were six ministers. Program was arranged, and he told them Balaji's money should be used for Balaji. I talked about that last night a little. So there are many ways, but you know, Prabhupada used the example: "In like a needle, out like a plow." This is an English expression. I don't know in Sanskrit is there. I, my knowledge is very little. I have to admit to you. So a needle is tiny, and the needle goes into a. There they call it a haystack. They make the grass for cows. They used to make bundles. Now they make wheels. It's very interesting in the West. They make these huge wheels and they throw them in the field and the cows come and eat from that, that uh, dry grass. So if you put a needle in the middle of dry grass, who will see you? Nobody will notice. But if it comes out in a big way from, you know, the plow goes into that grass and breaks it up and then it flies all over the place. So that's what you're talking about now. How to do that? It, slowly. It was, <laughs> slowly. We also have to be ideal. If we don't live ideal lives, it's not easy to set a good example. And setting a good example, it's not like you put on a garland, everything is okay. It, it, it's much more how we deal with the people, how we deal with our own devotees, right? Everything has to be ideal. Even Prabhupada used to ask for advice from his leading disciples. Should I do this? Should I do that? Not that we know everything, but it's very easy. You're sitting in a big chair. I'm great. It's very easy. That is called La Puja Pratishta, the desire for profit, worship, and distinction in society. That can overcome any human being at any time. It's not limited to one or two people. Any other question? Oh, okay. Acha. See, there is subjective and objective. Subjective means applied to a particular circumstance, and objective means generally. So we cannot talk about the sub subjective here. What's happening? We, this is a, a lecture on Bhagavad, and generally, Prabhupada's preach that we should be ideal. I can't say that I'm also ideal. I can't say that I'm also the perfect person. We have to strive. So that came up last night also, right? It's, it's like chanchala himana Krishna. Oh Krishna, the mind is very fickle. Arjuna told Krishna. Pramati balavadhudha. Obstinate. What was the other word last night? Obstinate and, uh, no, uh, stubborn. I said stubborn, someone said obstinate. Tasya ham nigraham manye vayu riva sudushkaram. I feel that it's more difficult to control the mind than to control the wind. But who can control the wind? Nobody. So nobody can control the mind. 
Then Krishna replied to Arjuna, Asamshayam Mahabaho uh, Mano Dudnigraham Chalam. It is very difficult to control the fickle mind. No doubt, Asamshayam. Without any doubt, Mahabaho, mighty armed Arjuna, Mano Dudnigraham Chalam. The mind is extremely difficult to control. Abhyasena to Kaunteya. O son of Kunti, by practice you can do it. Vairangena cha grihyate. Do it actually, grihyate means can be captured. The mind can be captured by practice and detachment. So we have to practice objectively. She's asking an objective question, not in this temple. Subjective. But objectively, we all have to set a perfect example, but it's difficult. We're not perfect. We're imperfect. How can the imperfect be perfect? By practice, abhyasena. Wind up. <laughs> okay. Half an hour late, almost. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.